Okay, so I wanted to go make a, um, a video lecture of working through some examples for sections 3.1 through 3.3. Um, so I selected problems 3.6, 3.11, and 3.12. Now it's important to know, because this book is kind of weird, section 3.12 actually depends on equation 3.68, which is in... A much section farther along under base excitation. Um, I don't know why they do that to people, um, but we'll be working that one together, so don't worry too much. Okay, so problem 3.6, so right here, here's our problem statement. Um, step two is to list our finds. So we're going to, and we're not going to plot, I'm just going to find. Um, x of t total, okay, for because we're looking for the total response of the system. Um, and there's three different conditions for A, B, and C conditions. Okay, three is free body diagram or a schematic. And this one is not really necessary, but if you want, you, you can draw that just to emphasize that there's no, um, there's no damping in this problem. Okay, uh, section four are your givens. Okay, so we're given that F naught is equal 400 newton. Oh, that's not writing. Let's write that a little better. 400 newtons. Mass is equal to 10 kilograms. Spring constant is equal to 4,000 uh, newtons per meter. And then the driving frequency is set at 30 radians per second. And then I'm not going to rewrite these. I'm just going to leave it right there. Let's give myself a little more room. Section 5 is our assumptions. And our assumptions, so... We've got one assumption that um, the dampening equals zero, and then also the mass of our spring is equal to zero. That's assumption two. Okay, our equations. So some of the equations we're going to need is omega n is equal to square root of k over m, um, and that x is equal to f naught. Oops. X of t is equal to x naught minus f naught over k minus m omega squared cosine omega n t plus x dot not over omega n times sine omega n t plus f not over k minus m omega squared cosine omega t. Okay, so those are the equations we need. Okay, um, I'm going to take these so that everybody can still see them. Okay, and put them on the next page. Okay, so let's get our natural frequency first. Omega n is equal to square root of k over m, which is square root of 4,000 over 10, which is 20 radians per second. Okay. And then um, let's get our f naught over k minus m omega squared. And that's 400 divided by 4,000 minus... 10 times 30 squared. Remember, this, this is the driving frequency, not the natural frequency. And that ends up be being negative 80 times 10, negative 3 meters, which is negative 0 0.08 meters. Okay? So that's our, our setup. Now let's get x of t. x of t, once again, it's x naught minus this term, which we calculated, omega n, x dot naught over omega n, sine omega n, and then that term again. 
and a, okay, let's bring our variables in over here. So x naught is equal to one, 0 0.1 meter, x dot naught is equal to zero meters per second. So that means that x of t is now equal to 0 0.1 minus negative 0 0.08 times cosine of 20t plus 0 times sine of 20t minus 0 0.08 cosine 30t, and that simplifies to 0 0.18 cosine omega t minus 0 0.08 cosine 30t oops that's not an omega t that's a 20t rookie mistake so let's look at b okay so b is x oops x naught is equal to zero, x dot naught is equal to 10 meters per second. So x of t is zero times cosine 20t plus 10 over 20 sine of 20t minus 0 0.08 cosine, oops, that don't make it, it's a 30, 30t. Whoa there, Nelly. That's the next problem. So x of t ends up being 0 0.5 sine 20t minus 0 0.08 cosine 30t. Okay. C and then x naught is equal to 0 0.1. x dot naught is equal to 10 meters per second. Now, if you come here, in this form of the equation, um, this term depends on x naught, but not x dot naught, and this one depends on x dot naught, but not x naught. So, essentially, we can just take a and b and add them together, really. So, x of t is b is now 0 0.18 cosine 20t plus 0 0.5 sine 20t minus 0 0.08 cosine 30t. Okay, and this adding together is just kind of a random thing of the way they'd set up their, their um, initial conditions, that way they overlap like that. Okay, so on this one, Okay, so here's, here's the problem statement. Here's our schematic. Um, step two, our fines. Um, all right, what are we asking to find? We'll find x of t. Okay, our givens is m is equal to 100 kilograms. k is equal to 4,000 newtons per meter x naught is equal to x dot naught is equal to zero. Okay. We've got our assumptions. And that's that c is equal to zero. And of course, the mass of the spring is equal to zero. Okay. Step six is our equations. x of t is equal to x x naught minus f naught over k minus m omega squared cosine omega n t plus x dot naught over omega n of sine omega t plus f naught over k minus m omega squared cosine omega t and that's an omega n there. Okay, and let's solve this problem real quick. So here's step seven, solve. Omega n is equal to square root of k over m, which is equal to square root of 4,000 over 100, which is equal to 6.32 radians per second. Okay. And then in this case, um, because x naught 
equals x dot naught, and they both equal zero. If we look at our equation, this term is zero, this term is zero, okay? And all we're left with is this term and this term. And we aren't given any other numbers for f, okay? So what we end up with is x of t is equal to negative f naught over, and we don't have the driving frequency, so this becomes k, which is 4,000 minus 100 times omega squared times cosine of the square root of k over mt. plus f naught over 4,000 minus 100 omega squared times cosine omega t. And that is our answer. So that's a real, you know, these are really quick plug and chug problems. Okay, so question 3.2. This is the one where it's got this weirdness where you're talking about the the floor is subject to vertical harmonic vibration with an amplitude. Okay, so when we draw this, we have our person. There's our person with some legs and a happy face. Um, and in this case, the floor isn't static. So the floor is going up with y of t, and the person's response is x of t. We haven't covered that, um, but I figured this is a good little problem. And... Um, we'll cover it in more detail, but I'll just show you. It's really just a, all that changes is a, a quick little equation, um, and and it's not that big of a deal, except that they didn't actually introduce that equation in section 3.3. .3. I don't know why this is located there, but, but there we go. So here's our problem statement. We're going to find K, and we are going to find the vertical displacement of the person, okay? That's step two. Step three is right there. And we might as well translate that to what it, something like that. Y of t, x of t, that's an x, that's a mass, that's a k, okay? Here's our schematic. Step four is our givens, okay? And our givens is the natural frequency 5.2 hertz, which is equal to 2 pi, 2 pi times 5.2 radians per second, which is equal to 10.4 pi radians per second. We're given the driving frequency is equal to 5.3 hertz which is equal to 10.6 pi radians per second. Okay, what else do we have? We have a mass equal to 70 kilograms, and the amplitude of this base excitation is equal to 0 0.1 meters, okay? Um, our assumptions is that C is equal to zero. Uh, we're gonna assume that the person is a point mass, which isn't a great assumption, but um, it's a incredibly simplifying assumption, right? Um, um, okay, step six is of course our equation. And the equation we need is its equation, I'll, I'll, write, the, I'll write the equation and I'll say where it is. It's one plus, 2 zeta r squared over 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 zeta r squared all to the 1 half. And this is equation 3.68, okay? And this form of the, oh, let's tell you what r is. Of course, r is equal to, that's not very neat, r is equal to omega over omega n. Anyway, this form, um, you're gonna introduce, the, you'll be introduced to this form when we go over section 3.4, um, but this is, this equation you're gonna become intimately familiar with 
it's not going to be so familiar that like you'll be on your deathbed reciting it the way you would with sum of forces equals mass times acceleration, but it's one you'll um, you'll use a lot for the rest of this quarter. Um, okay, um, and we'll we'll go over it in detail in section three dot when we go on the next video lecture. Okay, so now we get to step seven, which is we're going to solve. Okay, um, so omega n is equal to the square root of k over m. So omega n squared is equal to k over m. And that tells us that k is equal to m omega n squared. So k is equal to 70 kilograms times 10.4 pi squared, uh, which ends up being approximately 74.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter. Per meter. Okay, so that gives us A. Ten to the three newtons per meter. Okay, and then we go to B. Okay, and that is X over Y is equal to. Um, that big, long equation. I'll write it again because that's what fun looks like. That's not a pi. That's a zeta. R squared over 1 minus R squared squared plus 2. That's not a pi. I keep on writing pi's in here. I must be hungry. One half. Now, in our case, zeta is equal to 0. So x over y is now simplified to 1 divided by 1 minus r squared squared, right? Because that becomes, that goes to 0, and that goes to 0, to the 1 half, okay? Which equals 1 divided, now we've got to find out what r is. So let's figure that out. Um, well, we know r is equal to omega over omega n, which is equal to 5.3 over 5.2. Okay, so it becomes 1 divided by 1 minus 5, 5.3 over 5.2 squared. Square that again, and then take the square root, and x over y is equal to 25.75, okay? Now, what does that mean? That means if, if your amplitude of your input is, is whatever, some number, um, let's say one meter, the resulting amplitude is going to be 20, almost 25 meters, okay? And that's because you're really close to the natural resonance frequency, okay? So X now becomes Y times 24.75. And this, this is one of the versions of ampli amplification factors, okay? Um, and that's why you're going to become, from, your reason you're going to become familiar with this equation is we really care a lot about what is the amplification factor um, for, for our system, right? How much, if we put in a certain, if we get a certain input overall, what's our system response going to be, Okay. So there's some quick plug and chugs. That's about what this chapter is about, is plug and chugs. Every once in a while we got to go to the wrong section to find our equations. But if that does happen, I'll be here to help. Okay, thank you.